everybody, as you probably know, it's me, the Red Mage Crow, and welcome back to Danganronpa. Class Trial! Yeah! Now then, allow me to appoint a proper location for the proceedings. So, yep, this is what Please we're doing now. Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. Oh, 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 that's good. I thought we were going to the second floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. I mean, where else would there have been a red door? Red door on the first floor. That's where I should go. No. Where I have to go. Am I gonna go there myself, or no? Oh, it's just gonna put me right in front of it. Very daunting music. Dude. That music. Spooky. Yo! You're late, Makoto! We've all been waiting for you! <laughs> I bet y you were afraid you would be discovered as the the murderer you are. Why are you blushing? Listen to me! Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. Save that for the class trial. There, we can... All reveal the details of Makoto's crime. So they really are convinced I did it. But... I didn't do it. Me and Sayaka both know that all too well. But then... Who is the killer? One who murdered Sayaka. Is it really one of us? <laughs> Is everyone here? Okay then, please board the elevator Let's in front it. of you, which will transport you to the court. I'm ready. I'm cracking my knuckles. Not gonna do anything for me in this situation. Will be decided. Uh. <laughs> I'll meet you all down there. I'll be waiting. Let's do it, Monokuma. I'm ready to box. Like, how do I get to it in this situation? I guess I have no choice but to get on this elevator. Let us begin. Yes, indeed. Good idea! Oh! <laughs> uh, are you scared? But no. Here it isn't quite right. Makoto. I said it before. But it's up to you to uncover the mystery surrounding this case yourself. If you don't... Never come to grips with the truth. I need to uncover the truth of Sayaka's death. And no way in hell does this lady ever, like, chime in when it's the final countdown. And basically make make it so that we all don't die. I'm looking at Bianca here, too. Oh, man. I didn't need someone else to tell me to do that. In Sayaka's honor. I swear I'll find out who the real killer is. As I raise my voice and try to give myself courage, I turn, trembling with anticipation, toward the elevator. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. Everyone else was already on the elevator when I finally stepped on. I'm just last to everything we do, I guess. The doors close, and the elevator starts to move. Get used to this picture, guys, because we're going to get less and less people as we go down. The steel box descended with heavy clunking sounds towards the school's basement. Wonder if this is how a death row inmate feels when his time has finally come. Oh. Rather than that, is it not more like a defendant waiting to receive his judgment? Oblivious to our shared anxiety, was I... Hold up, wait, how do I... No, not auto. Oblivious to our shared anxiety, the elevator lowered us further to the... Blah, blah, blah. Type jazz, wait, was I not the ones that was supposed to be reading that? Nope, that was definitely me. Okay. 
further into the bowels of the school. Yay! <laughs> you finally arrived! <laughs> what do you think? Doesn't it feel like a real courtroom? It's like a Hollywood movie set, right? Not even close! It's total crumb! Well now. Okay, okay. Everyone find your assigned seats and sit down! Yeah. Hurry up now! Hurry up! We did what he said and found our seats. I like how there's just like already two people out of this race. And there's supposed to be like one more like right there. Man. Wait, are we the last person taking place in this trial? Yeah, this is a good view of everyone in this room. Yes. The seats were arranged in a giant circle. A round table, you could say. Set up so that everyone could see everyone else. It also meant it'd be easy for anyone to transfer their attention and unease onto anyone else. How could you tell? The air seemed to grow heavy as we sat there. And so the curtains on our first case opened! A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Mm. Oh, we get the save. Yay! Okay. I'm pretty sure that I have all... I don't have all skills set. Set that. We should have, like, one more, I think. No, we just have Melodious Voice. Really? Okay, well... I have finished my preparations. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. So, fortunately for me, from what Cloud told me, Everything should be fully voice acted, so I don't have to do much talking as characters, supposedly. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the Blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. And the killer really is one of us, right? Of course! I like this. This is actually a nice change of pace for this game. Okay, then. Everyone, close your eyes. And whoever did it, raise your hand. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the <laughs> hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? Okay. What's going on with those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. It's just reminding of us of who's dead. Friendship penetrates. He fooled me! No! Okay, but what about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Your voice sounds very familiar. Oh, no reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay. okay. That about does it for the preamble. Get ready to get started. Hey. First up is the case summary. Now, let the class trial begin. About to begin. The debate to decide who we think the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak up about everything. Because this isn't just about me. Everyone's lives are on the line. First non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely, because I don't recall. As things progress during each class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. 
During these discussions, characters will speak out one after another without pause. Up to you to unearth any lies or contradictions buried in their statements. What this means is that you will have to use your truth bullet to refute what they say. Any relevant truth bullets you found during your investigations will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the left stick to aim, then fire with the Y button. Pay close attention to each character's statements and use your truth bullets to blast the right ones. Note that if you run out of time, it will automatically fail, so please be careful. Press the start button during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. I don't like this. <laughs> Make your argument. Evidence of a struggle. I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono. Okay. Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. Yes. In the bathroom. So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the- That was not the right button. She didn't even have a chance to resist. There we go. No, it's wrong. There we go. We broke it. Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. Yes. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. Yes. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? Not at all! She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then, she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. I really hope that all of this gets picked up because the music is really, really loud. Is there a way to kind of, um... Sorry. It might be a little bit difficult to really, like, I'll fix that now. Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Okay. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial. We need to determine what was used to kill Sayaka. <clears throat> Make your argument. It's a knife. Knife stand. So what was used to kill her? Was some kind of sharp object thrust into I don't, her stomach. I don't like. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon. So the killer used some random knife they had on. The kitchen knife. No, it's wrong. Okay, it seems kind of straightforward. Actually, no. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Yes. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder. We discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Yes. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. Yes, yes. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Yes. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? Oh, look at that. Good old, uh freaking jazzery that people use to distract others from what's really going on. That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? Hold on a second. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Thank you, Yoko. Well, we can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. I think it... Kind of doesn't, but it does change. It doesn't change the fact of who the killer is. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. Yes. You really believe that? Yes. He's right. There's got to be a breakthrough somewhere. Just waiting for us to find it. Because I know darn well I'm not the killer. There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. You can concentrate by holding the RB button. While you're concentrating, 
time will slow down so you can pay closer attention to what everyone's saying. On top of that, it'll steady your aim, making it easier to target potential weak spots. Concentrating like this consumes the focus gauge. If this gauge empties, you can't concentrate. But the focus gauge will recover over time. Let your brain take a rest. No need to rush. Well then, good luck, have fun. There must be a lot that's going to happen right now. Howie's account. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. No. Nope. where does that get us? You mean Koto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret. He did it in the There we go. No, that's wrong. Music is like really loud in my ear. It kind of hurts a little. Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Oh. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you, you want. Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? I mean, a, wit a witness who didn't see anything is not really a witness at all, right? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? I went to. Well, I uh, went to go get some tea from the kitchen last night, and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea and went back to the kitchen to wash my glass, one of the knives was gone. So you're saying that the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. There we go. The knife disappeared while Fina was in the dining hall, but I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Exactly. Okay. Then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? Ah. Uh. Idiot swimmer girl. <laughs> no. Uh, more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Thank you, Monokuma. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. Yes. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. But what if they kill two people? Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oh wow, thank you, Monokuma! Oops, did I say that out loud? Uh, I guess maybe he didn't mean to say anyway, that? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife, so I'm not the killer! Okay, so then, who did take the knife? Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. Oh, thank you, Sakura. That's right. Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Wait, but if she was there... Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, <laughs> couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because... Just spit it out already. <laughs> oh god, I actually skipped it! I stayed in Hina's room last night. Oh. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. Hell yeah! You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? Nope. We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. Exactly, Chihiro! So, I don't think that's a problem. Not at all. It is a problem. A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's, it's unwholesome. Who's the boy and the girl in this retrospect, though? But I'm a girl. <laughs> You are? 
Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, Tata! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh, yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Oh. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Right, like... Well, because... They're not here anymore. So someone who's not here... Are you talking about... Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. S Sayaka? Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was... Sayaka. I got it! Then... Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. The only one. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. When Ooh. she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. Ooh. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely... And the person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. Probably. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her, and she was killed with it? Seems that way. In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. That is still a point. What? See? He did do it after all! I hate you, Toko! No, you're wrong! So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Ifumi, you're just as bad. I'm sorry. I like you a lot better, though. Mm hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. Dang, if I don't do something, they're gonna blame me for the murder. Don't they understand? If they convict me, everyone's gonna die. Hold on. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer. Wouldn't you say? Thank you, Kyoko, for being the voice of reason. Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. Mm -hmm. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Yes. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes. First Hangman's Gambit is about to begin. Would you like to hear it? Absolutely! As things advance further, in a class trial, the Hangman's Gambit will eventually take place. The point of this is to reveal an important phrase related to the incident in question. You have to deduce the phrase from the letters flying around, and the letters are already known. Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying letters in the right order. Use the left stick, and then press Y to shoot the letters. Shoot down the wrong letters, you suffer damage to your influence gauge. This gauge reaches zero, or if you run out of time, you will fail. Well then, good luck and have fun. This guy should have been at the scene. Oh, was it? That must be the crucial point. But if we can figure out what that something is, in which it's the, uh, paper thingy. Hair. Hair. Now I understand. That's right. There wasn't a single hair on the floor. Yes. So, the culprit removed some evidence? It removed a lot of evidence. Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? Exactly. It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. Yeah, but that still makes no sense. It just makes it a lot more weird. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. Exactly. Ha ha ha! Yes, very true, very true! Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course. To remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. You would think that. Makoto isn't the culprit? But it could also be a nice little... Diversion. 
Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. Yes. I would like to hear these reasons. Do yeah. you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. Not exactly and how the did the killer get into the bathroom? Reason. Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. This is so refreshing, I'm sorry, I just have to keep saying it. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? The doorknob! Killer struggled getting into a bathroom, and the evidence that proves it is the object the killer broke. The bathroom doorknob. I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Yeah. The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. Yes. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. Mm -hmm. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay, then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Do it, Kyoka! I know I said that she doesn't really help anything, but it's the final verdict I'm basically talking about. Yoko said it was a bewildering act. I almost didn't notice it at first, but is it the key point here? There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Just go ahead, absolutely. From here on out, the number of weak spots will start going up. But no matter how many weak spots, there is essentially one lie or contradiction in that debate. What I'm trying to say is, not all weak spots you see are necessarily false. Use a truth bullet on the wrong one, and only will you fail to refute what they said, but you'll also lower your trust with everyone, and your influence gauge will take damage. Now this is important, because if your influence gauge falls to zero, you fail! You'll have to rely on your own logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or contradictions. Well then, good luck and have fun. Wait till they start giving us different bullets. Door friend. The incident took place in Makoto's room. Mm-hmm. Saika was first attacked in the main room. like we don't want to shoot to that. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. See, that's not the right one. Oh, what's wrong? You're trying to dis disrupt the trial. It's going to be put on trial Shoot. yourself. So, just wanted to show. Not everything is as it seems. The incident took place in Makoto's room. Uh huh. Sayaka was first attacked. But then the you start room. over all the way at the beginning. She then fled into the bathroom. You gotta be very sure that this her. actually works and that. And they got that. into the bathroom. But just at because he point, says the had to bust down the door, down the it has door. nothing to do with the door frame. But right here, locked it no, is not a locked. correct thing because we don't have. A lock in the boys' room. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, so you right? you gotta be very careful. Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep. yep. True as true. <laughs> no! I am the Monokuma now. Oh, that's me! But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door. It just goes to show my luck. <laughs> that's not lucky at all. I think it makes me really so lucky. So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. Mm -hmm. yep, the killer yep. could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. Killer was convinced the bathroom door was locked, but they didn't know that the door actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail is that... The, the important detail of the scene of the crime is that they didn't know that the crime took place in my room! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! Is it, Hifumi? Yeah, he's absolutely right. Say what? <laughs> well, to be more specific... Oh, God. Oh. What the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. Which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! Yes. So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Exactly. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Mm -hmm. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? Exactly. That is a definite possibility. Exactly! So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Can I just say, if it was me, I'd say, SUCK IT, TOKO! Then Makoto couldn't have done it. Exactly! SUCK IT! That's what I've been trying to tell you! Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, then the trial isn't a success. Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! That's just stupid, Taka! Majority rules? You really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Yeah. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, okay, Aoi, go ahead. Oh, you. Celeste, give her a shot. You gotta sound so disappointed. Right. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? I mean, mm. yeah. Yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Yes. Then maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Which is very funny because out of all the lock picking videos I have ever seen, they always end up unpicking or picking the lock. So even if locks are said to be non-pickable, they can typically be picked with typical picking lock picking techniques. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Sounds like you are stepping out of line, Hifumi. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how frightened she was. That's the answer right there. There's no way Sayaku let someone in because... I mean, it's the switching rooms, but like... I got it! I just because wanted to make Sayaka sure. was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Mm-hmm. The same goes for you! Oh, no, wait, no, that's me. 
Why would they put me in front of that? The, bleh. the same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I am absolutely will not open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. Yes. What if her being scared was a lie? None. Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? Mm -hmm. There's something I want to talk to you about. Just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. Good going, Kyoko. And these are the words that appear. This is actually something you can do in real life. A really cool freaking thing to be able to do. Oh man, I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. How he gets it? And you're right, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. Exactly. When I saw that, I was like, "Holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on." It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Exactly. Oh, and I should also mention. I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Oh. Huh? Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. And oh. either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. Yes. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, oh. I didn't. Well, of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Oh, then that note, Sayaka wrote it? But, but why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? <laughs> Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can you be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? The last. Stop taking a gamble. Very well then. Pay attention. Uh, Celeste making an argument that isn't even good. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yes. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. Mm -hmm. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, mm -hmm. they would not have any connection to what happened. It certainly would seem Okay, so that right there in the beginning. Killer went to my room instead of Sayaka's, and the reason for that is because it got switched. Yes. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms. I really wish that there was like a but in the speed note, up. Instance. The place they were asked to come to. It specifically says, my room. Yes. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that met. No, no, no. This game is so cool, honestly. I really dig the trials. The nameplates so. on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? Yes. That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. Yes! And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Yes! Plus, their rooms are right next to each other. 
so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? right. Okay, then who did it? The only person who could have switched the nameplates. The only other person who knew that they had been switched room was Sayaka. Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. Exactly. You can also infer as much from her note. Something I want to talk to you about. The two of us. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get into the wrong room. Okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. Mm-hmm. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Yes. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? There's only one simple reason why they would do that. To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. Mm -hmm. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. I mean, yes and no, Taka. But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Thank you. Thank you, Mondo. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? The reason I know Sayaka's wrist was broken with a fake sword is because if you look at her wrist, there's no doubt. Sayaka's wrist. I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Yes! Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Is, is that gold? Yes. It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. Mm -hmm. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword, right there on her wrist! Thank you, Taka, but no. I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. Okay. Yoshu Hero? We'll, we'll call you Hero. Hero, shut up! <laughs> what happened in my room? What led to Sayaka's death? That's what we need to make clear. There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. God dang it. Are you getting used to these non-stop debates? Starting with the next debate, I'll try loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. But just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to refute each statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you might damage your influence gauge. You can press the left button to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullets to fire. Press and release the LB button to cycle through each bullet. Or you can hold down the LB button, then use the left uh, stick to elect a specific bullet. By the way, if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. For our purpose of this game, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Well then, good luck and have fun. Thank you! Yep. So we need the replica sword sheath, I think. When the fighting broke out, 
There we go. The culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword based sneak attack. Maybe not that one. And that's what broke Miss My Zoner's wrist. No. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her, too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. Shut up, hero. The person with the sword really did attack her. No explanation for how a certain part of the sword got damaged. But when the fighting broke right here, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword based sneak attack. BAM! Shut up, hero. Go back in the corner. Cry about your crystal Actually, ball. No. I don't think the fight started with the sword. It definitely did not. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. Exactly. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. I'm trying, Mondo. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Exactly, Mondo. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? How indeed? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. Very possible. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Definitely seems that way. Means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. But I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. Mm -hmm. The okay. culprit came in. Found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. I'm sorry, Taka, but no. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her, too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? You, would, you definitely would in most situations. Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. A part of her body that shows she's never used the sword. If you wanted to use a sword, her palm would I basically be the one to touch it. You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. Exactly. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. Exactly. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Exactly, Nagy, my boy! Maybe she washed her hands after she had escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? Don't go, go the hell away! No, that's not it at all. There's no way Sayaka washed the gold coating off her hands because there's a certain regulation that talks about what happens in the bathroom at night. The water was off. I got it! According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. Exactly. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime, right? Exactly. Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower yet. Coco, take a bath. Take a shower, please. Oh, my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. What do you know what a big, fat, ugly donkey smells like then? Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. Hey, Fumi, go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. An insult, obviously. Thank you, Leon. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. Mm -hmm. But hold on. If that's right, 
And the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... That would have been Sayaka. I got it! Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? Yes. But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka. Sayaka? Yes. Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. Mm-hmm. What? She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Exactly, Sakura. Which brings up another point. Nakuto. Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Yes. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? It is a possibility. Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. Mm -hmm. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. Yes. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. Yes. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? Uh -huh. But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. Right? I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Deception! Betrayal! She was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Uh, don't go, go away! Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Yes. Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. Mm -hmm. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Mm -hmm. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! Yes! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Why am I Oh, yeah. <laughs> we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. You already know! If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Is, is it really all over? Obviously... I'm committed to finding out who killed her. What can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. There's only one thing left. A dying message. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? There's one more, no, you wrong. son of a gun! There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? Yes. Not dining, dying. The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? There's no question that Sayaka wrote that message, and I can prove it. Her left index finger. I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. 
That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Exactly. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? What hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. Yes. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Exactly. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... Uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one, one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ooh, Hifumi! Hell yeah! Oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one, one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Yes. Whoa. You might have finally just said something worth a shit. Thank you, Mondo. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Unless you flip it. Dang it, it's no use. I just don't know. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Thank you, Kyoko. Uh-huh. Rotate it. I think maybe, maybe I see something. Oh my God, now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue card and right onto who did it. Exactly. So, whose name did she write? Siaka's dying message reveals the real killer's name. Return her message 180 degrees. It should become crystal clear. There's only one person with four letters in their name. Leon! Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L-E-O-N. L-E-O-N. Or more accurately, Leon. Leon. The roles have reversed. Instead of save me, Leon, it's like, save me, Leon. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. Now, you see how, like, uh, this right here, how he has this weird impact-looking frame? I think anyone who's going to kill is probably going to have this impact frame somewhere. Possibly. Maybe. Can't really say for sure just yet. No, it's not random at all. Not at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down as it were. Mm -hmm. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Yes. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Th that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Yeah. Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? Mm hmm The evidence that Leon tried to get rid of? The thing I found on the ground in front of the incinerator. A burnt piece of shirt. You mean the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. Mm -hmm. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece exactly. burned off and got left behind. Yes. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? You would think so. Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. 
Except theirs aren't a jacket. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Exactly. Yeah, I think so. Start the remainder of the button-up shirt. Killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention in order to figure out who's responsible. Not where, not, uh, not how, but when it was, no. There's something about it we need to pay attention in order to figure out. One of these two, no, where? No. Yeah, okay. Okay, we got some mistakes that we're thinking about it. Is when it was disposed of? Nope. How it was disposed of because they couldn't get into it. I'm just dumb. I got it. And I'm not. I like, look closely at how the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. Uh -huh. oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. Oh, I totally forgot about this. But... You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. No, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. That's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. There is exactly one way, and that's the shattered crystal ball. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? Nope, not the right one. Dang it! Shoot. I, I I like how I'm always fumbling at the very end. That's just so like me. Room. If I'm patient, Whoever I can actually get that. Get to it. Had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the. That's kind of how I and always got. You'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the evidence. Nope. That's no, where you're not. wrong. Right. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. Mm -hmm. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? No, you totally yes, can. Yes, you could. If you use this. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but... Uh... But how would you use it? Killer had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was to throw it. The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that through a gap in the gate? Yes. Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on. Very strange. I'm quite certain it was up last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. He only had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Exactly. Once they got the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Yes. Hey, come on. What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. Mm -hmm. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Exactly. Well, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? 
The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... It have been much of a challenge at all for the killer. Because he is the ultimate okay. baseball star! Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star! Isn't that right, Leon? <laughs> you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. Exactly! You, you, you can't be serious! I... I... I'm not the killer! These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! I'm telling you, you shut the hell up! You won't admit it? Okay then, Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. You got Listen it, to Kyoko! Me. What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered, and the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. The closing argument is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? I feel like I got this, but just in case. This has one last element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic, there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section and press the A button, Holy cow, you'll get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck, have fun. Alright, so this is... Oh, it's done in, like, manga form, too. So... Huh. These are all kind of, like... Done. Oh, it's because there's more than just that. So we do that there. And then... This there. There might be more here. There we go. Okay, it's getting very nice now. And now... Tries to break through. They're inside. Yeah, no, I guess that still makes somewhat sense. There? No. This would go over here. Uh, no. Uh, no, she already dropped it there, so it would be this. Then, what goes here? Does that go here? That probably goes there. Um, he grabs this. Grab that, does that, but that gets burned up like that. No, that goes, like, right here. What's that? 9 out of 10. No, 10 out of 10. Reenact! I forget that. The killer is The you. buttons are kind of weird. I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. Exactly. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. Mm hmm She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. Exactly, exactly. 
But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. The sword. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. Mm -hmm. And that's when she <laughs> lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Exactly. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. Yes. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. And with that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. Dude, like, taking off your shirt, there was a man naked in my room? Holy cow. The fact that he spent so long lint rolling everything. He had to lint roll everything, including the bed. That would have been a pain in the butt, man. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. I mean, an almost perfect crime. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator thing. You know, honestly, what would have been the problem of him just hiding his shirt inside of his room? If he just hid his shirt inside of his room, I think that people would be a little bit better off. But the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. Mm -hmm. Okay. The killer managed to Shut throw up! the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, That'd be an impossible throw, but the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. Yeah. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life. Ah. <laughs> Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator. Which is just very tragic. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Oh! Isn't that right, Leon? Back at it! It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. Mm -hmm. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt, and that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon. Do you object to anything that's been said? A lot, actually. Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object! I object! I object! Dude, he is very much spazzing out in that case... Uh, area. I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit! It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! It's not you who needs to acknowledge it! Well then. I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence. 
I'm sorry. I have the evidence. First bullet time battle is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Yes! Oh, it's this thing. Sometimes during class trial, your opponent simply won't want to hear what you have to say. When this happens, you will engage them in a head-to-head -head battle. We like to refer to this as the bullet time battle, aka the BTB, the BTW. By the way. During the BTB, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm. Are you serious? Match your button presses with each tempo marker as they move across the screen and reach the center. Press the A button to lock on to an opponent's statement. Okay. Destroy the statement you've locked on to with the Y button as the tempo marker reaches the center. I don't fully understand this. Use this method to deal damage to your opponent. If you can pull it off, you'll be the one in pain. Wait, what? If you can't pull it off, you'll be the one in pain. I was like, wait, what? Do this consecutively, and you'll start a combo. Keep this going, and you'll initiate a tempo up. On the flip side, if you keep missing, you'll get into a tempo down situation. If the tempo changes, so does the timing for hitting each button. So watch out for that. Deal enough damage to your opponent, and their weak spot statement will appear. At that point, press the Y button to shoot it down with a truth bullet, like any other statement. Shoot their statement fast enough, and you'll become you'll come out victorious. But just like before, if your influence gauge reaches zero or you run out of time, you fail. Well then, good luck and have fun. I don't like this. When the killer removed the screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them. Mm -hmm. they used something of their own to remove the screws. Could I it have been? Just to acknowledge you. You're stupid. 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 Stupid, 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 stupid! I have to show indisputable evidence that Leon's the killer. I need to figure it out. I'm very scared. Moment of truth! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! Stupid! You lie! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! Wow. It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Final strike! Where's your proof? This should prove the toolkit. Got really fast at the, the end there. Screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the toolkits we got each had one inside. Yeah. That must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the toolkit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. Exactly. Only the boys got toolkits, so the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Exactly. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! Yes, they did use stupid, stupid, stupid. It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then the screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Yes! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Exactly. Stupid! Oh, Leon. <laughs> this is all on you. You didn't have to kill her. So, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. Yep. 
<laughs> Squishy. I somehow got an A rank. Oh, and I got coins for it. I got 78 me- Did I get 78 medals? How many medals did I get? <laughs> oh. Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? Fortunately, yes. You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Right. Okay, then let's get excited! Who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be exactly, Monokuma? Riddle old Rion. <laughs> uh oh! Looks like you got a ride on the money! The blackened in this case, the one that killed Sayaka, <laughs> was none other than Leon Kawada! My voice is not ready. Dumbfounded. Huh? <laughs> hey, hold on. Leon. Leon, did you really kill Sayaka? But. I don't believe it. You son of a bitch. Son of a god. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I didn't have a choice. It was. Kill or be killed! So, that's why... I killed her first! None of you are any different! One wrong step and one of you... you you'd be the one standing here! It was complete chance that I wound up like this! I was just... <laughs> unlucky. That's all. I think I was the more unlucky one. Uh, yeah. Hey! Come on! You expect me just to accept my death? Everything it became clear. The decision we made was right after all. When I think about that, honestly, I'd be better off if we'd been wrong. Because if what we came up with really is the truth, then that truth is that Sayaka was trying to frame me. But even if that's true, I can't say she was wrong. After all, the mastermind. It's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw in there. If I was her, and the video had actually had something to do with me, I can't even imagine. Now we're trapped here. With no way out! They're probably waiting for me. What? I Why? can't afford to be stuck in here! The one thing that was more important to her than anything else. Her dreams. Her friends. I've seen something like that happen to them. And Sayaka. I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. And that's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. So, when she said... No matter what happens, Please, always be there for me. I need you on my side. <laughs> she was lying to me from the very beginning. She was using me. Is that why she talked to me in the first place? 
I... I guess I'll never know. Because there's nothing I can do to ask her what she was thinking. Once you're dead... That's it. <laughs> Boy, howdy! The entertainment industry must sure be terrifying, huh? I mean, to try and kill someone just because of those relationships. Ba -bum, ba -bum. She seems so nice and lovely on the outside, but inside... She descended into pure madness. What did you say? Phew. I understand. Really, I do. Yup, yup. You're in utter despair thanks to Sayaka's betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. The stronger those feelings, the stronger the despair when they collapse. Stop screwing with us! This is all your fault! Nayaka being forced to do something like that. All of it! Everything! It's all your fault! Suddenly in a frenzy, I lunged at Monokuma. But... That's enough. As angry as I was, Kyoko Lan latched to my arm without hesitation. Her grip was like iron. Strong enough I was sure it would leave a bruise. Calm down. If you really want to make her enemies pay for what they've done, you need to let it go for now. Ugh. Dang it! Ba -bum, ba -bum. Oh, that was a close one. I thought for sure you were gonna give me a good walloping! Just barely avoided punishment, you did! Yes, indeed! Now then! Since you so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the Black and Leon Kuwata will receive his punishment. Pun punishment? You mean. Execution? Yes! Wait a second! Nope, no seconds! I didn't have a choice! I had to kill her! Yeah, that's it! I was just protecting myself in the heat of the moment! It was self-defense! It did- it became less self-defense once she ran into the bathroom, buddy. There was no more self-defense after that point, because after she disengaged from the situation, what you did after the fact was what we know as retaliation. And therefore, it totally drops the self-defense because the entire situation was dissipated. Is that okay? How exactly was it self-defense? Hmm. When you forced your way into the bathroom, did you or did you not use your very own toolkit? See, exactly. After she shut herself in the bathroom, you went out of your way to head back into your own room. When you came all the way back, broke into the room and killed her. Am I wrong? Do you understand? You had any number of chances to stop what you were doing, but you chose not to. Is it not because you had an unclouded intent to commit murder? Oh! So that's no, why. That's not. Stop it! Had enough of this. Oh. Oh, are you sure? You were closer to her than anyone, were you not? He killed your precious Sayaka. Do you understand? I can't say Leon is solely to blame. Of course, I don't plan on blaming Sayaka either. Because... Because the one to blame is him! If it weren't for you, this never would have happened to Sayaka or Leon! 
We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation. The Mastermind! Unbelievable. Uh-oh! Did you awaken to your sense of justice? Hey, um... Well, it just so happens that there's nothing more unethical than an unwavering sense of justice. He's not true. Justice is only a tool to be used to validate your actions. Your version of justice may or may be the just kind, but you can still do stuff in or towards the act of justice. But justice is just two sides of the same coin. One of the two sides of the same coin. To a degree, I think. I don't know. Either way. After all, it's people with that sort of mentality that perpetuate war all over the world. Exactly. Hmm. Is that the kind of justice that's awakened within you? Just shut up. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, more importantly, Let's chills, hurry up chills. and get to what everyone's been waiting for! The punishment! I'm begging you! Please! Don't do this! Hey! No uh, more begging! Now. No more excuses! You must pay the penalty for breaking the rules! Society demands it! Stop! Please! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! For Leon Kawada, the ultimate baseball star! No, 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 no! Yes, 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 yes! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! No! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Gavel. Yep. <laughs> Time for the punishment. <laughs> like, honestly, like, these moments are so surreal. Dude, his butt would be, like, bone bare at that point. <laughs> and like all of these are just brutal i like how we're all just kind of like here to watch too like this would scar people 1000 below like honestly like the first initial like like battering would be enough to kill him those things shoot fast He would have been dead on the first volley. Honestly, like, it would not be a pretty sight to see. Even cool, Monokuma, get out of here! Like, honestly, if you could somehow survive any of that, and you decide to, like, walk out of here. Go on, be free. You're a demon. Holy hell. What we saw. That was the true face of despair. I mean, like, if we can't call him that, what else could we call it? Like, Zoinks! Extreme! <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, Monokuma, shut up. It hurts. My adrenaline is pumping right out of control! <laughs> What's going on? I, I, I can't, can't take it anymore. Thank you. Do we really have to keep doing this? 
I just can't take it. Well? Oh, hey, if you don't like it. <laughs> all you gotta do is swear to cut all ties with the outside world and accept living here forever. Well, that's only if every single one of you can get on board with that. <laughs> oh, my poor voice. Damn you. Man, screw you. Why the frick are you doing this evil crud us? What the heck? Evil? You make it sound like I'm some dark, awful so secret society type guy. Say what? Or in this case, a dark, awfully secret society type of bear. Well... I mean, honestly, all he's doing is getting rid of the people who basically do evil stuff or have the capability of doing these evil things. So, in kind of like a sense, he's kind of helping society, but all together, it's like, it's still, to a degree, it's evil, but like, also, it's kind of good, in a sense, right? Because he, he's, he sees that there are some people here who have the capabilities of doing, like, very bad things, and he's basically getting them off the streets, to a degree. Huh. Um, so why are you putting an upstanding young citizen like me through such grueling ordeal? Hey, um... It seems like you're trying to use common sense to make sense of something that doesn't make any sense. That's like trying to put a smile on a scale. I just don't think that's possible. I'm also kind of done to a monokuma. Oh, oh. Um... Hey, uh... I don't think that what you're saying and what I'm quite saying quite fit together. <laughs> Shit. You piece of turd! I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna... Oh, god dang, Mondo, buy him dinner first. Buy them dinner first. We don't really know, Monokuma. Monokuma takes the voice of a man, but might not be a man. You never know. <laughs> you must really hate me to be so angry, huh? But if you do that... You're biking way up the wrong tree. Yeah. <laughs> what happened, happened because more than one of you decided to get out, right? No matter how much time passes, you can't get free of your regrets from the outside world. You're all to blame. <laughs> of course, we can't get free of the outside world. Being trapped in this insane place. You're trapped, are you? I'm sure once you learn all the mysteries of this school, your thinking will change for sure. You think, boy, isn't it so wonderful how we all get to live here forever? What does this mean? What are you trying to say? Hey. I feel like there's some deeper meaning hidden in here. Honestly, I think that this would be kind of a cool plot, cool thing. I mean, I wouldn't be able to get to see any of my family, and that would definitely suck. I wouldn't get to see Cloud. That would actually really suck. But, ultimately, if you think about it, you get to live in a place, no rent, forever food, and who knows their video games here, you know? Oh, you got the ultimate programmer. They could make you a video game. Console. Probably. The same. Just like before. Kills! 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 Anyways, let's get to the blackened punishment. That's what everyone is waiting for, after all. Hey. You say everyone. Who exactly are you referring to? <laughs> Sorry! I've said everything I got to say! I need to save some of the fun for later. <laughs> and just like that, he was gone. He left us there, overwhelmed by a nightmare turned reality. Please. Even after he was gone, he stood there forever, unable to move. Actually, no. It wasn't that long, I think.
Everyone just lost their sense of time. They're all too scared. Scared of being alone. <laughs> I I would think that we'd be at chapter two by now. Yeah. But god man. Chihiro. No one even tried to speak. Faces were stone. Their voice is dead like mine! But it was in that moment. Just a second. Lakoto, can I talk to you for a second? Moved in close and whispered into my ear. Makoto. Before we head back, something I want to talk to you about. Hmm. It's about Sayaka, isn't it? I'm surprised you figured it out. Listen. <clears throat> I told you before the class trial started. You had to figure out the mystery of this case yourself. You wanted me to realize how Sayaka betrayed me by myself, didn't you? Thought never even crossed my mind. I feel like such a fool. I mean, such an easy target like that. It's true. <clears throat> Ayaka meant to double cross you. That's a fact that you can never change. Even till the end, I wasn't sure of her decision. That's why she lay dying. She was thinking of you. Who was thinking of me? can't just say something like that. I mean, no way you can know that. Only Sayaka would know for sure. You can't ask her now. However... Even if you can't ask her, you can infer it, don't you think? Her final thought is how she could protect you by giving us the name of Leon. What? So... The fact that she used her last ounce of energy to leave her dying message proves it. I didn't care what happened to you, never would have left that message. Well, maybe she just wanted to get back at the person who had killed her. Certainly. That's certainly one possibility. But I don't think that's what it was. Anyway... She was... uncertain. She wasn't sure she could kill someone. Or deceive you. Which is why her plan failed. Her hesitation attracted failure. Right. Almost ironic when you think about it. Why are you telling me all this? Because you're the kind of person who can overcome this. So you can move past the deaths of your friend. Friends! Ayaka and Leon. And keep moving forward. Correct. Without someone like that, the others would never be able to break free of such a desperate situation. Move past their deaths? That's... I could never do that. No. I'm going to carry them with me for the rest of my life. How could I possibly move past something like that? Leon... Sayaka... I'll carry them with me... forever. I'll carry their memories with me wherever I go! So instead of forgetting them, Choosing the hard road. <laughs> well, I have high expectations for you. As she said that, she revealed the smallest smile. Hey. By the way, I have to admit, I'm curious. How did you know I wanted to talk to you about Sayaka? Oh, well. I'm psychic. What? Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have pretty good intuition. <laughs> ah, that was cute. Okay. You got points from me for that one. <laughs> and thus, three are already gone. To be continued. You received the despair bat. Oh my god, okay, that's, that's it. Forget what we're seeing here. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this recording of... Oh my god. Break, what are we playing? Danganronpa. 
don't know if this is gonna be one video or if I can try and make this into two separate videos. I don't know. But with that being said, go ahead, leave in the comments down below what you think of the, you know, death of Leon. Like, do you like it? Do you not like it? You think it's surreal? You think it's justified? Do you not think it's justified? Uh, you know, do I need to do better with those? Do I not need to do better with those? I don't know, let me know. But in the meantime, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. See you in the next school day. Woo! Forgot the cow, bye-bye.